Hello, everybody. My name is Oos Sunai. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development at ONF. In this capacity, I oversee all mobile-related projects. I would like to thank the OAI Workshop Organizing Committee for their invitation for me to take part in this year's event. Today, I will be introducing to you SDRAN, ONF's ORAN Architecture Consistent Programmable RAN platform. This is a relatively new project for ONF, but one on which we have already made significant progress and consequently attracted significant attention. Let me first set the stage. As we all know, RAN is undergoing a significant transformation. The pillars of this transformation are disaggregation, virtualization, and SDN. Our journey in this transformation starts with an architecture that has none of these features. Until recently, all radio access networks were very tightly integrated with vendor-specific At each tower, we had RF units and antennas mounted with a baseband unit at the tower base where the RAN protocol stack ran. Even though various organizations such as Small Cell Forum had some open interface specifications, for the majority of the cases, the interface between these components were vendor specific. Further, each vendor had its own portal to configure, control, monitor, and log their own equipment. This portal had vendor specific interfaces to operators OSSBSS, as well as regional sound control applications. Now let us look at the transformation step-by-step. Step. As you know, at a high level, the base stations are responsible from two fundamental tasks, conducting packet and signal processing to transform IP packets to physical air packets and vice versa, and also to control mobile link, which is inherently a broadcast link shared by many devices over fast time varying conditions. The base station uses a protocol stack to deliver on these tasks. In this slide, I have depicted the packet and signal processing components and the mobile link control components in blue and red respectively. In the ORAN consistent architecture, the disaggregation we're talking about will take place in two dimensions. First is the horizontal disaggregation which will effectively disaggregate the stack into three components and realize them at distinct locations, are used at antenna sites, they use at cell sites, and see use as virtualized workloads. The second phase of the disaggregation is a vertical one, where we will first disaggregate the CU into its user plane and control plane components. Here, the CUU will process and forward user traffic. The CUC, on the other hand, will serve two purposes, process and forward mobile control related traffic and oversee near real time mobile link control using radio resource management functions. This, uh, then uh, the next step is uh, bringing STN based programmable control to the rest. This will introduce a near real time RAN intelligent controller or the RIC to the architecture as the STN based RAN controller. Running on the near real time RIC platform, we will have numerous RAN control applications called X apps by ORAN. In a true SDN fashion, this will allow us to potentially further disaggregate the CUC, lift the RRM functions from it, and realize them as control applications. Once we have the near real time rig platform, this becomes a unified place for SON applications and policy driven applications as well. Some of the RAN control will take place in non real time. So, a non real time rig interfacing with the near real time rig will also be part of this architecture. This takes us to ONF's SD RAN project. At the center of the project is the development of an open source cloud native near real time RIC platform. This is based on ONF's production grade SDN controller, ONOS. The SD RAN project has been driving the next generation of ONOS, one that is cloud native and microservices based. For this reason, we call it the micro ONOS. The project also in, uh, includes the development of a number of X apps running on this RIC under development by the project ecosystem. A fair number of these XAPs are ML-based. The E2 nodes to be controlled also come from the project ecosystem. 
In addition, though, we at ONF uh, have just started leveraging the OAI RAN stack with an initial focus on the disaggregated LTE stack. We're adding E2 interface capabilities to the code and conducting necessary modifications to enable proper operation of the X apps that our ecosystem is developing. Now, let us go over the micro ONOS near real time rig operation. Imagine this RAN network state. We have a number of end user devices, some of which are mobile. They're being serviced by geographically distributed RUs that are pooled by DUs, which are further pooled by user plane, control plane, separated CUs. Now, each of these devices will have certain attributes that may be useful while conducting computations to make grand control and configuration decisions. For example, um, the, for the E2 nodes, which frequencies they support, how many antennas they have, how much power the E2 nodes transmit, uh, where they are, how many end user devices they can support, etc. In addition to all of this though, the time varying channel qualities the end user devices observe from uh, the active RU, as well as the quality metrics from all neighboring RUs, and these could be on a per RU antenna level, by the way, um, would be of great value, uh, especially if the near real time rig is hosting some um, RRM X apps. All of this network state information is to be collected and stored by the near real time rig. Then um, we need a southbound. We call this the E2 termination, as well as a data store uh, to maintain this network uh, graph and the attributes. Clearly, we would need a messaging infrastructure internal to the near real time RIC to pass information between these internal services. Um, we will also need to gather and maintain policy information from the operator's service management and orchestration framework, as well as some instructions from the non real time RIC. This means we need terminations for the corresponding interfaces. Now, imagine that we have a number of X apps. Based on operators' desires and XAP capabilities, a given XAP may interact with only a subset of the E2 nodes uh, via the E2 termination. A subscription management service will provide the means for the XAP to route relevant messages back and forth between itself and the E2 nodes it can interface with. XAP decisions may naturally conflict with one another. Then we need a conflict mitigation mechanism. And we also need to make sure um, that the XAP operations remain secure. The near real time RIC conducting critically important control operations will need to be highly available. This means the platform should be able to operate in a multi cluster environment. Last but not least, development of an SDK is useful in making the lives of XAP developers um, easy via associated RIC specific libraries. As deployments materialize, it's certain that multiple near real time RICs will find their way in operators' networks, some based on open source and some proprietary. So the SDK development will need to ensure that the bindings that bridge the XAP to the specific near real time RIC platform um, are standardized um, so that an XAP may actually be ported from one RIC platform to another with no change uh, necessary. I mentioned near real time RIC interfaces of E2, A1, um, and O1 so far. Let me give you an idea of what they are. Um, let us start with E2, the interface between the disaggregated RAN elements and the neural time rig. This is effectively decomposed into two parts. The E2 access protocol defines how RAN elements and the neural time rig communicate. In addition to the transport protocol and the schema, it also defines basic action types with which control and configuration of the E2 nodes may be possible. However, the E2 AP is agnostic to a specific control and or configuration operation. The E2 service model, on the other hand, 
um, is effectively a contract between an application and a, a, a given set of E2 nodes. Um, it specifies how configuration and control operation is to be conducted for a given application um, or class of applications. As a consequence, the support of a given E2 service model um, on the G node B side requires enhancements on the stack code. So the ORAN architecture also includes a non-real-time RIC, um, as I mentioned. Um, and this non-real-time RIC is to be connected uh, to the real-time RIC uh, via what we call an A1 interface. The purpose of the A1 interface is to enable the non-real-time RIC function to provide policy-based guidance, ML model management, and enrichment information to the real-time RIC for operational optimization. The, the O1 interface, on the other hand, is the interface between management um, entities within the service management and orchestration framework and all ORAN elements. Um, this is for operation and management to achieve FCAPS management, software management, and file management. Um, as part of O1, and let us call this O1 star, is the interface between the SMO and the infrastructure cloud management framework supporting virtualized, containerized, or and network functions. Since there are no ORAN architecture consistent E2 node products in the market yet, we have also developed an emulation platform on which we conduct the development, testing, and bug fixes. Um, also to aid in our performance testing, we have developed two skeletal X apps, a centralized handover application and a mobility load balancing application. The graphical user interface of the emulation platform is shown in this slide. Um, this user interface is linked to Google Maps. On a specific geography, we drop multi-sector E2 nodes, as well as high mobility end users at any scale we want. Then as users roam around on the streets, uh, the network state information is collected by the New Year Time RIC. Our X apps, handover and mobility load balancing specifically, leverage this information and assert control. So we observe devices being handed over between E2 nodes and the transmit power levels of the E2 nodes changing over time. As I have mentioned, micro-ONOS-based New Year Time RIC is cloud native. So as such, it uses the widely adapted um, cloud native computing foundation platforms, such as Kubernetes, Helm, Prometheus, and Grafana. Here you see its Grafana dashboard. Um, the dashboard gives us a detailed monitoring capability in a time series format. Um, as such, we see for each application and uh, handover in this case, performance metrics, their deviation, their averages, we also see the frequency of control decisions. Um, leveraging any part of this data, we can also use Prometheus to set up alerts um, so that we can act quickly whenever, or even better, right before an incident occurs. Onos uh, near real-time RIC is being designed with scalability and high availability in mind. Here you see our initial performance results for the centralized handover operation. But high availability is not a concern. Um, you see that we achieve very good end-to-end -end latency numbers for a geography with 100,000 users and use all of the, uh, these users moving with high speeds, resulting in about 300, uh, uh, 300 handovers every second in the geography. We observe that we achieve um, latencies under five milliseconds 99% of the time. Um, just as a reference, any number under 50 milliseconds is acceptable for a handover operation. When we enable a multi-cluster operation for high availability and further scalability, uh, we need to distribute the network state across a distributed data store. Naturally, this steals away from our performance. 
um, with further optimizations. And by the way, we're continuously uh, conducting these optimizations. We can now report uh, that even in an HA deployment, the latency performance is under 10 milliseconds, 99% of the time. With the worst performing handover procedure over an extended period of time being under 58 milliseconds. So all of this work is uh, within the ST, STRAN project uh, is an ongoing collaboration and interaction uh, with our ONF partner operators and, uh, and vendor partners. Um, ONF is also an ORAN Alliance member and is actively participating and contributing uh, in uh, ORAN working groups. This concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. Have a great day and enjoy the workshop. Bye.